Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I'm wrapping up my challenges series with the Northern Realms challenges, which will give us Henselt and Radovid. And I'm actually going to be using my Skelliger beginner deck for this. I've used a different faction beginner deck for each of the challenges to show that all of my beginner decks do work. Um, and if you're interested in the cards in the Skelliger deck, then do check out the beginner Skelliger deck guide. Anyway, let's jump into this challenge and we'll see just how this does work out. I didn't actually read that. I probably should have read that. It normally gives you Shipmate. tips like lock this character or damage this character. Uncrate! So Radovid's annoying because he deals damage, which means our self-harm strategy is going to be a little awkward, but not the end of the world. In terms of our mulligan, we want to get rid of our first lights because he's unlikely to play weather. Weather is typical of the monster's AI. We got Geralt, we got Commander Swan. These are good. Um, anything else we want rid of? Honestly, I'm pretty happy with this, so let's just leave it at that. That is pretty good. Okay, opponent's turn. Add two armor to adjacent units. Fresh crew, boost self by a little bit. Okay, this isn't too bad. So I think what we're going to do to begin with here is we'll pop out our clan and crate raider. Unfortunately, we didn't get any of our bears to get into the graveyard to summon, um, but we can hopefully make this work anyway. Although, as things are going, he is dealing a lot of damage to me. I'm going to use my leader ability here to pull out another... Uh, and create warrior. These, like, they harm themselves, but it means that when I play the Warcryer, we should get a decent amount of... Well, we would have gotten a decent amount of buffing if this guy wasn't constantly shooting my units, but... We'll play it now anyway. And this will actually buff those guys up, as you can see. Uh, it does weaken the clan and create raider for each one that you trigger, but it's given enough, us enough points to win the round. Which is nice, because now we've, we've won a round, and now we're going into kind of a resurrection strategy, basically, where we're going to be resurrecting units and whatnot. Um, we do have another... And crate warrior here. Let's see what we've got. I'm just having to think if there's anything particularly useless. First light, we're going to get rid of that for sure. Um, and what we can actually do here is we can use our priestess of Freya's and basically set up a second kind of buffing station, I guess, with the clan and crate warriors. So play one, resurrect one, and then clan and crate warrior them. Although here, Holger Blackhand, veteran, strength and self by one. Deploy damage a unit by five if it was destroyed, strengthen the highest unit in the graveyard. So we can tactically play this and kill that. And in killing that, we've then actually strengthened this Clan and Crate Warrior even more. Which means that when we resurrect him, Freya. like so. Um, oh, did I pick the wrong one? I picked the wrong one! Oh my god. That's terrible. I was going to say, when we, when we resurrect him, we'll get a decent amount of, uh, of strength. I think actually, to be honest, what we can do then is maybe pass on this round and go into the next round and try and... Uh, have a strategy from there rather than this one as we have messed it up although what we could do is still we could decoy the priestess of Freya, but we can do that on the next round you know and we still have points on our opponent so if we pass here it will force him to play more cards and i think that is a, a clever plan a little bit of a misclick there for this shit. so there's uh there's Vesemir and lambert that's won him the round it means he has one more of them in hand which is good for us but not the end of the world so try not to misclick your resurrects guys that's uh that's a good recommendation here. Ooh, we got an extra resurrect. This is really good. So I actually think, all in all, we have a pretty nice hand here. I'm gonna get rid of Scorch, just because I feel like I'm likely to pull, you know, something different from my deck, if that makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm likely to not Scorch anything, so that's not that useful. Um, so we can open with what Sigdrifa and resurrect the Clan and Crate Warrior, like so. Follow you always. Enter the fire. Because now if we play the, um... If we play the, uh... Clan and Crate Warcryer next to him, we're going to get a decent amount of strength here. And then we'll play Priestess of Freya. Serve her who is virgin, and we can actually get another one of these, so let's get this guy out as well. Because we can always decoy one of these, provided he doesn't kill them. And it, he's unlikely to kill both of them in one turn. So I think this is okay, yep. Uh, so what we'll then do here is we'll decoy our Sigdrifa. She's less easy to kill. Pop her out. And this need? also then protects from other things. And then grab the Clan and Crate Warcryer. Play him here. And he'll debuff himself. Obviously, he weakens himself. But you can see just how much value we got there out of the Clan and Crate Warcryer buff. Which is pretty nice. Um, What do you do? Damage an enemy by two. That's not really that useful for us. We'll pop our Brockfart Archer out and we'll shoot these guys. We've also obviously got Commander Sword we can use to buff this row. I'm just a little bit nervous about um about uh toot, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So let's I mean we could Royal Decree and see what we get. Let's play Royal Decree. Um into Ermion. 
Because this, we draw two cards and then we discard two cards, so we can just see if we can get something more useful than Cleaver. Because in the current state, you know, Cleaver's not that useful. Oh, we got a Berserker, but we don't have the way to shoot it, I don't think. So I think what we'll do is we'll get rid of uh, Cleaver and the Berserker, and we'll keep the uh, the Brokvar Archer. So that was just kind of a little bit of a card trade there we were making. Um, although actually, you know, we maybe should have kept the unit that we play in the front row, but we can toot the back row as well, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we're only going to take armor off these, which isn't so useful, rather than damaging them, but all in all, it's fine. And we don't actually need to play either of these cards to win this round. Uh, we can, you know, just to see if you want to see how many points we would have had. We'll toot this round. Brings us up to 81, and then plus 10 for Geralt is 91. So we would have had a, a pretty decent score there by the end, even with the slight misplay on round two. And you saw that, like, because of the misplay, and even, you know, with Gwent in general, you don't always have to win every round. There, by passing that round, we definitely gained card advantage, and card advantage is nothing to, you know, stick your nose up at, basically. Let's go. See what else is uh, Radovid's got up his sleeve. Basically, from what I've heard, the monster's heart. last one, fate. the monster's weather Dagon challenge, which I remember finding really hard, is pretty damn hard. And the uh, Nilfgaard one, I know people have been finding hard, but I haven't heard anyone say that the Northern Realms one is too bad. So hopefully, we should be more or less okay here. We've got a Warcryer, we've got some Priestesses, Holger. It would be nice to have. Um, I think we're, we're, we'll be happy with this. I was going to say it would be nice to have one of those bad dudes we can shoot but is that that useful in fact we'll get rid of the archer because we have nothing i was gonna say we don't have a raging berserker to target and then of course we draw a raging berserker uh such as life so we'll open with our clan and crate warrior i think this is a good opening hand or opening strategy and then we can always pull out the uh leader so we'll pop him down and that'll also get another one of these out of our deck which gives us a couple good units obviously to uh I was going to say to Warcryer should we want to, but our opponent's gone for the pass here. That's a little bit of a tempo play. Like, cards that play other cards, people typically call tempo plays because they give you a lot of points in one card, so you get a bit of speed going, which then means with your opponent that they're going to have, you know, a harder time. Uh, so we got a mulligan here. What do we want to get rid of? I actually feel like we've got mostly good cards here. You know, we've got, we've got a good synergy going on. Maybe Cleaver? Although it does say that locking the enemy is quite useful here, so we could get rid of Priestess. I think we're going to get rid of Scorch again. Um, it's not, you know, as useful. And then we'll open with the Raging Berserker, which is a really good target to then, you know, shoot. But basically what we want to do here is bait cards out of our opponent. So he's played uh, Vesemir and Lambert, which means he still has Eskel in his hand. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, at this point we're just kind of, you know, seeing, seeing what there is, basically seeing what he has and kind of deciding from there. It's a Swallow Potion. Scorch would have been okay here, then. Because it's now stronger than my bear. I was worried that I wouldn't have a target stronger than the bear. We'll play Ermion. Ermion's going to draw us two cards, and then we're going to discard two cards, so we can kind of have a look at what we got. Oh, we got we got the uh, the Archer. The Archer Synergy. This is... Oh, I don't know. What do you... What do you... What do you pass on here? I mean, we could pass on a Resurrect, but I don't think discarding Resurrect is smart, because you can always you can always Resurrect, use the Resurrect to get something that you got rid of. So I think what we'll do is we'll get rid of this uh, this Archer, because we can always decoy it, and get rid of... Maybe Cleaver, because we can Sigdrift for him. I think we'll get rid of Cleaver for now, because we, we can always Resurrect it and then decoy it, so I'm not too worried do at this stage in the game. Test my patience. Hey, he's debuffed my bear. That's quite good. So then we can pop the Raging Berserker out again. And actually what we can do is we could decoy the archer or just resurrect an archer. And basically by resurrecting an archer, like Martin so, what we can then do, turn this guy into a bear and then we'll shoot him up a little bit as well. Like so. And we got some points. But really, we're just kind of draining his cards here. We want to hold on to our, our resurrects for the, the later games. And I could decoy this one shoot this and then we could we could maybe play our, our Warcry on the front row. But it, it really depends on kind of how we want to do this. I think what I'm going to do for the time being um, is just play Holger. We'll pop Holger out and take out Lambert. But doing this, I've then buffed obviously my Clan and Crate Warrior and then I think we'll go for the Warcry strategy on the next round. So I think at this stage, you know, we're actually, you know, pretty all right. We can pass here and I think things will be, you know, things will be fine. We have Resurrects, we have our Warcryer. We have a decent number of points, so he's gonna have to play more cards. Um, rather than risking committing. You could you could keep going here and you know play the resurrects on the last round because you know you're gonna get a lot of points from it and try and draw cards out of your opponent. It's really up to you, kinda how you feel the tempo of the game is, and this is something that just 
comes with practice. You know, the more you play, the kind of the more comfortable you'll feel in certain situations. Uh, do we want a mulligan? I don't think we want a mulligan, to be honest. We have basically three resurrects in hand because we can decoy one of the resurrects. So I'm thinking like this is all in all pretty good. This card is annoying. It just does one random damage each turn. But actually what it does mean is that we can resurrect our bears because if we resurrect our bears, what will then happen is they'll potentially get shot. And then when they get shot, we can then buff them with the clan and crate war prior. So I'm not too worried about this. Sure. No problem. So then if we play this card, we resurrect a bear. And, and then that's, you know, a potential target for the uh, the trebuchet. Yep, like that. Which means that when we play our war crier, we're going to get good value out of it. Then we can decoy Sigdrifa. So pull her out. Play her again. Get our last bear out. Hopefully he gets shot. He might not, but, you know, we, we can hope. Come on, hit the bear. Oh, it's not to be. Though we could always hit the bear with Triss. But I don't think it's very worthwhile. So I think we want to, we want to, you know, have the opportunity to at least buff this bear. So I'm actually going to wait and see what my, uh, what my opponent hits. There it is. That's the hit that we're looking for. Because now when we play our clan and create war crier, then uh, we will get huge amounts of strength. You ready? Boom. Look at that. 23 and two 15s. I think I can deal with that. And he's, uh, he's not remotely close here. You can see he had an infantry full of um, Temerian infantrymen. When you play one of these, it summons all copies of the unit. So he wanted to obviously play one and get all three, but they were in his hand. And that's the risk when you run, you know, something like Temerian infantrymen and Vesemir, Eskel, and Lamba, is you've got six cards where you want to mulligan, you know, half of them, more than half of them. Like, those are all targets that you want to be mulliganing. And the fact that you only get three cards to mulligan puts you in a really awkward position if you play like that. So... Not a strategy that I recommend, but we'll keep going, and we'll see, you know, how this, how this goes. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. Test my patience. For Skelliger's glory. Right, the final round of it. I mean, maybe this one will have good luck with his. Um, maybe this one will have good luck with his um, cards. We, I don't think we need both of our war criers. You know, once we've got one, you can always resurrect it. It does, you know, damn, uh, like it, it weakens itself, so you can't resurrect it too many times, but. It's not terrible. Got a lot of resurrects. Scorch. We haven't really been using Scorch. I'm kind of okay with mulliganing that, to be honest. I was trying to find our uh, our war criers to buff, but it is what it is. So what we'll do this round is we'll play a different strategy. Is we'll go with the uh, raging berserker strategy, basically. And that's what you wanted to see. That's what he wanted to see. There was all three of them come out like that, because obviously that's just put 16 points on the board. Fortunately, we can keep up the tempo by summoning our. Uh, our clan and crate warrior there and then we can use the brockvar archer to you know to damage this guy and a couple of these guys oh he got locked that means he doesn't transform if i unlock him will he will he transform i guess you'd have to get damaged again Ooh, this is an interesting conundrum i don't know i don't know should we find out i think like this is a good point to like it's a learning curve right plus if we stack the front row we can toot so i'm not really bothered by that yeah, because I think what I can do now... Shoot him, causing him to transform. We'll shoot him to weaken him, because then we can buff him. And we'll shoot... This guy, just because having three on five, if we had Igni, would be nice. Oh, I can't, I can't shoot this guy, I just realized, because he's not, he's not damaged. I mean, I could damage him by five, but it's not really worth it. Do we go for the Warcryer here? This is the question. We're not going to get huge amounts of points, just because of how weakened these are. Because obviously it boosts them by half their power, but they don't really have that much power. Hmm. This is a good question. I think what we'll do for now is we'll just play Triss. She's just like a good number of points. And just, it keeps our tempo. He's then Trist me. We could play Ermion. Ermion will give us some options to, uh, options to, uh, discard basically and, and switch out our hand but actually i think what we'll do we'll resurrect our archer we'll weaken this guy and then obviously i want to get damaged so we're going to hit these as opposed to the armored units even though there is armor synergy in in, uh, in nilfgaard but now what we can then do is uh we can then play this guy and there we go he's worth a bit more that time play the top two cards including gold from your deck I'm itching for that battle. That's an interesting strategy. I'm still ahead, though. Oh, no, I'm behind by one. This is awful, but we can toot. I guess we just open with the... We go with the toot. 
That's 16 points right there. You sure you want to keep going with this, Radovid? No, I didn't think so. And he's really committed to this round. This is the problem. When two players commit quite hard, you know, it can be quite difficult. And we have two Resurrects in hand. So what we can effectively do here is we can basically just um, Resurrect. The only problem we have is, like, he's got a lot of cards in hand. Two First Lights, not great. We'll mulligan one of them. And we can always pull at Ermion, though, basically. we can. What we can do here is play Royal Decree into Ermion. Play Ermion. Draw two cards. A decoy and a first light. And then we can mulligan both of these first lights. And we had a better hand, basically. And now we have one, two, three, four resurrects. No, three resurrects for the next round. Um, the Raging Berserker is not that useful this turn. I think all I'm going to do here is pass. Uh, he's going to have to play another card if he wants to win the round. You can tell he's got Temerian Infantrymen in his hand because he just played one and drew none. So, you know, he's, he's stocked his hand with Temerian Infantrymen once again. Uh, and this puts us in a pretty nice spot into the final round where we have, like I say, three, four Resurrects, should we say. This is actually a really good hand. We could mulligan the Raging Berserker. I was going to say on the chance that we draw, um, on the chance that we draw, um, what was I going to say? The chance that we draw Geralt. Actually, I'm just going to pop the, straight pop the Scorch here, I think. Because I'm going to be summoning big points, so I'd rather, you know, be able to play Scorch than have it in my hand and not be able to play it because I was I at risk of Scorching it. myself. So we can you pop you out, Sigdrifer, into... I guess we take the 13 Strength. We'll the 13 Strength Plan and Crate Warrior. Do I have another one in here? I don't think I do. I'm just kind of planning out my Resurrection strategy here. But I think we actually should be okay, because what I can then do is play this one and Resurrect the Raging Bear. Then we can resurrect the, uh... Then we can resurrect the, uh, Brockvar Archer. I'm actually gonna use a decoy resurrect here rather than the one in hand, because if your opponent had Lacerate, they'd kill all of your resurrects and life would be awkward. So you're better to use a decoy, you know, earlier rather than later, if you intend to. And we'll shoot me and you two. And then we can resurrect the Warcryer. I mean, we're ahead of him anyway, so this extra resurrect is not so useful, but resurrect the Warcryer, put him there. He'll actually banish himself, because he'll obviously debuff after he buffed these guys. But considering, you know, how many points we gained there, I think it's a pretty worthwhile play. And there you have it, we won the round. So you can see this is the uh, this is the self-harm deck, and it's pretty, I would say it's pretty consistent. Like, I, I feel like there's, there's good strategies for every round, and you can see we're kind of doing this win round one, lose round two, win round three strategy, which has been pretty cool. Right, so what's coming up with this next deck? Try to destroy enemy cards that could become too powerful to counter and lock the rest. Okay. Summon all copies of a bronze ally. Okay, so that's what he does. This is interesting. I've not seen a lot of pencil on piece. ladder. Not on ladder. Uh, in casual, I'm not ranked 10 yet, but um, I've not seen a lot of a, a lot of Hensel, so I don't know. I feel like Northern Realms is in a bit of a odd spot in terms of their just general deck. Armion, Geralt, Sigdrifa, Clan and Crate, Berserker, Archer, Warcryer, Scorch, Decoy. This is all nice. This is actually like more or less the starting hand you'd want. Do we keep Scorch? I think we mulligan Scorch once again. Getting a Resurrect is nice, but beyond that, I think. Like, I'm pretty much happy with this with this current hand. We've got, you know, more or less everything that we would want. Prize winning cow is annoying. When you kill it, it turns into a short. I think we'll go with the clan and crate warrior. Or if you damage it, it turns into the short. So we can't damage it with the clan Brockvar archer, because in doing that, he'll gain beneficial units, basically. We'll pop out our leader again into another ancrate. Like so. And this is a good way of summoning Ancrates because it, it buffs one before it injures itself. So this is really good because then they don't have the same amount of strength, which is really nice for us. Put our Berserker out. It means that if we do play our um, Archer, you know, we're going to get okay value out of him. We shoot this, this, and obviously not the uh, prize winning cow, but you can see there we then get an 11, which is nice. And our opponent has passed before we could even play the Warcryer, so that's all right. And there we go. We won the round. And there's his uh, six, strength, six strength chort, which is actually fine because, you know, we can always play uh, our good friend Geralt over here and life will be good. Okay, I think we want to mulligan the Berserker because we don't have anything to trigger it. Holger is nice. Holger is nice. I'm going to start with Ermion. 
and play him out, see what we get. We got Commander's Horn and First Light. So we'll mulligan the First Light, we don't need that. And then it's whether you want to keep Commander's Horn over, you know, something else. That is the question. And I think we want to keep Commander's Horn. Do we want to keep Commander's Horn? We can resurrect the Clowning Crate Warcrier, so I'm thinking we keep the Commander's Horn over the Warcrier. Because we do have a lot of Resurrects in hand, and once again, we're kind of utilizing that Resurrect strategy. So I think that's, you know, an okay strategy, because we've got, again, four Resurrects in hand. I kind of want him to, like, outpace me a little bit here. Like, what I would quite like is to play Geralt and get 13 from it, but we're not quite there. Uh, although what we can do is play Holger Blackhand and kill this. And that'll buff the weakest, strongest unit in our graveyard, which gives us another, you know, nice clan and crate warrior. And you can kind of see the strategy that we're employing here. She is uh, resilient. That means she stays on the board at the end of the round. I'm just wondering if we kind of go for it this round or what? We don't want to decoy the Holger Blackhand because there's no, there's nothing that we can straight kill. We could target draw Triss and then decoy Holger Blackhand. That would be a good strategy. I think we'll do that. So we'll pull Triss. And take out Sile. Because by basically if we can kill Sile, then she's not gonna stay on the board and we're gonna have an easier time on the next round. And if we decoy Holger and kill Sile, then we will also buff the weakest unit in our graveyard. So then we can do this. Play him again. And just take this one out. I mean we could kill the ballista, but I think it's better to, to take out the, the resilient unit. Although, you know, him keeping a unit with one strength wouldn't really be that much of a problem. So if we pass here, our opponent is gonna have to play another card to win. And at that point, I think we're going to be in a really good position, all things told. So I'm thinking we'll pass here. Because we have a lot of Resurrects, we can play them all in the back row. I'm too old for so we're not in a bad shit. position here. He's got, oh, he's got freaking Eskel, Lambert, and Vesemir in his hand again. Every time this happens, like, I actually don't think the AI knows how to mulligan. They're like, ooh, silver cards, we'll keep these. I'm wondering if that's how they've programmed them. Like, maybe they've programmed them to keep silver cards, and as a result of that, they keep basically messing up. So what we could do, let's let's try this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna resurrect uh, Holger Blackhand and then kill this unit. Holger Blackhand's such a good card. And then we have this one unit in our graveyard that has 22 strength. Like, what's not to like here? What's not to like? Let's see what we get. Let's go rally. Oh, we got a war crier. That is not what we wanted. We'll greet everyone. I did know that that was a potential I could have drawn with the rally, but I was hoping, you know, for one of those units to injure or another, to another, what's it called? Thinking me, Bob. Force all Northern Realms machine allies to damage a random enemy, but you don't have any, you don't have any. Oh dear. Bow before modern Freya. Right, let's, let's pull out the big boy, because if they, if they kill him, we can re-resurrect him, so I think we just have to kind of go with it. Unfortunately, he didn't get to buff the clan and create Warcraft, but you still get nine strength off him, which is nice. Hensel doesn't get to spawn any bronze allies. And this is why you don't sit on your abilities, you guys. This is, Bow before this is why Freya. you don't do it. Let's take a bear. And this is the deck. It just has, there's so much potential, like, resurrect. Shit and with the replayability of Holger Blackhand, you know, with Sigdrifa and stuff, it's kind of ridiculous. He's not got anything else to play. So our final score here would have been 82 when we play Geralt. And yeah, that is the first round of Hensold. I mean, the first round is meant to be the easiest one, for sure, but I definitely feel like, other than, you know, a couple of the challenges, they haven't really posed a threat. And I'm hoping that CD Projekt Red does a better job of, I guess, how they program their AI. Because I currently feel like the way these challenges are, they're not that challenging. And I understand you don't want them to be crazy challenging, because, you know, people want to get new leaders so that they can play against actual people, but... I do feel like it should be, at the very least, a little bit challenging. Priestesses, Warcryer, Sigdrifer, Holger. We got decoy as well, didn't we? Ooh, this is such a nice hand. We'll get rid of Scorch again. Scorch doesn't really fit in this deck, but because it's a free silver, I'm just, you know, trying to keep free silvers in the deck so that people basically, uh, people get, um, people, like, have a relatively cheap deck as opposed to being like, you should craft, like, eight silvers for this deck. You can't even put eight Which silvers pleasure. in a deck. Dandelion boost up to three units in your deck by three. Okay, this is fine. So let's go with our clan and crate warriors for now. We've actually got, we can get all three of them out plus the war crier. Blue stripes commando. Summon this unit whenever a different ally with the same power is played. That is confusing. I feel confused. I'm open to scorch here. I like how I'm like, I'm open to scorch here and then the scorch happens. You gotta, you gotta identify your own mistakes. Although we, we could resurrect them. I actually think we're, 
We're still okay to go. We're gonna play Geralt here because they're ahead by more than uh, more than ten points, which means that we can get his brave trigger, which is nice. Uh, then we can go into the clan and crack and crate, which will get that last uh, that last unit out of our deck, the last warrior, which is nice because it also thins the deck a little bit. And if you thin the deck a little bit, it makes your life just that much easier. Um, I think we want to play Holger next turn. We could go Warcryer and basically. Um, we could go Warcryer. I actually think what I'm going to do here is pass. I have a nine point lead and I have a one card advantage. So I was going to say, I don't think my opponent's going to play more cards there. And all these other cards are going to be more useful for a future round. So let's kind of get on with it. Let's get rid of First Light. We've got an Archer. Okay, I guess we'll open with. We'll open with Ermion, because, like, worst comes to worst, you just disc discard the cards that he draws. You know, so, like, that's an option. As it is, I don't think I want to keep Cleaver. We haven't really been finding value in him. And I'm also going to discard, because we've got to resurrect, I should probably discard something that I can resurrect. Probably the Raging Berserker, although. I actually will discard the Archer, because it may be that my opponent damages Can't my Berserker me. for me. And if he doesn't, we can always resurrect, so that's okay. Shuffle up the three cards from your graveyard into your deck. Okay. I'm going to play the Berserker for now. But honestly, at this stage, I think what I'm just going to try and do is just kind of stall out the round, basically. You know, I'm not in I'm not in that much of a hurry to win. I'd rather just force my opponent to play cards and then go from there. You stand before royal majesty. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. We can actually kill him with Holger, which is what I was looking for. I was waiting for a Holger target. A oh, wait, he's got armor. No, we can't kill him with Holger. Oh, the misplays. He's buffed him as well. I'm actually all right passing here. We have so many resurrects in hand. We may as well just resurrect a bunch of units on the next turn and then go from there. Even if we didn't get our, you know, cool triple Holger strategy that we had previously. Like, he has to play units. I don't have a clue why he played Hensel because he has no bronze units to summon all of. Oh my god, he must not have any bronze units in hand. Does he only have... Does he only have, um... Silvers? Silvers and golds? Wait, can he not win? Am I about to win this with 19 points? No. Oh my god, wow. That did not work. I don't know why he played the D-bomb when he had Bloody Baron in hand, which would have given him 6 points. In fact, I don't know why he played the toot either, which would have given him enough points. AI, you guys, not even once. We can get rid of one clan and create warrior. We don't need both of them. He played Adrenaline Rush for zero points. I don't even need to resurrect anything. <laughs> this is just embarrassing. There you go. I'll just win by six. And that's what happens. Like, if your deck isn't designed well, then draw like that can basically just ruin your day. And it looks like these AI decks aren't... They don't seem to be designed particularly well because, you know, that did not work out in the slightest for him. <laughs> like, I barely even had to play cards, you know? But I hope you guys can realize the kind of power of Skellige that we've got going on here where you win a round, you bleed their cards out on the second round whilst holding your resurrects. You and then on the third Quite round, you can it. just resurrect loads of points and they just can't keep up with your tempo. That's, you know, the strategy that this Skellige deck typically uses. We don't need first light. Got Geralt, so that's nice. Uh, we probably don't need Scorch. Holger Blackhand is good. And we can get rid of Cleaver too. I've not really been using it against the strategy, even though it's like, make sure you lock all of your opponents. It's like, nah. Nah. Right, so let's not get ourselves Scorched this time. Oh, Yennefer is a pain in the arse. We can't, we can have locked her with Cleaver anyway, because she's a gold card, but she zaps your units by, your strongest unit by one each turn. Um, although she's quite good against, like, if, they, if you have the Raging Berserker, you can kind of use that to deal with her. I actually think, though, overall this should be okay. Because um, what we can do is we can play this into this one. Which she's going to then zap, which is okay. But then, basically, we can keep playing... Um, or we can keep buffing units, basically. Although, this is a little bit awkward. Hmm... I think we maybe war cry now. I could war cry, play one more unit, and then war cry. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get this Ancrate warrior out before Jennifer starts zapping everything. And you don't really want things to have the same amount of strength. So I think if we go for the war crier, this is going to give us a bit of tempo. Um, and with that tempo, we can potentially pass. Yeah, because now we have tempo. They're only going to deal two damage with Jennifer on the next turn, 
which means if he wants to win, he's going to have to go at a two-card disadvantage. Um, and typically, you know, your opponent doesn't want to be at a disadvantage because it doesn't Death work well. Enemy. And we're still Last ahead. This is like, here. what is he doing? AI is at a three-card disadvantage now. Good job, AI. Um, Yennefer's a pain. She's a really good beginner legendary because she fits in every deck. And you can see there, she basically, she zaps the highest strength unit. But if two units have the highest strength, then she hits both of them. Like, you can play into her with stuff like the Raging Berserker. You can use that to trigger or armor strategies, like they do uh, both play into her and those can be nice. But as it is, not that useful. We're gonna get rid of this clan and crate dude. We don't need him this turn. Death to the enemy! So there's our Berserker. We can get all set up to basically oh, zap cool. him. Seven limbs, blood and guts. Oh, he's got armor. I was gonna say we can Holger this, but I don't wanna Holger it because it's got, obviously it's got a bunch of armor, which we do not want to deal with. Um, Let's play. We'll play this guy for now. Obviously pop him and then weaken their armor a little bit. It's not too bad. I don't think any of these really need locking right now. Although you can lock a uh, resilient unit and that's good, but we'll, we'll hold off. We could just kill him, you know? We could just triss him and he's dead. Guess that's a, a strategy. How can I Although actually I should have holgered him, now that I think about it. But what we can do, we'll hit this one. Then we can holger black hand this guy. Then we can decoy holger black. Okay, well, we're apparently we're not going to play holger black hand. As it is, though, we're going into the final round with eight cards versus their, what, like, five? Yeah, we have eight cards, they have five. So, you know, we're in a pretty pretty sweet spot. Scorch. Scorch is not so useful for us. Onward! So we'll take that out, like so, and that'll buff the strongest unit in our graveyard, which is this clan and crate warrior here. And we can always decoy this and, you know, buff him again, is the thing. That's, like, kind of what you have to be aware of here. There's nothing to Scorch. We'll play uh, Geralt here. Way. Basically, the rest of these cards, I want to kind of wait and see what he has and what he plays so that we can retaliate into the decoy. Me a coward? Onto the Ballista, like so. Uh, we can actually Scorch ourselves and still win, I think, with our 19 strength Clan and Crate Warrior. In fact, we could Scorch ourselves, Resurrect him, buff the Clan and Crate Warrior. Like, <laughs> you have options here because what you can do is I could kill this. I could intentionally self-Scorch into you know what let's do it we're not gonna lose right he's got one card and we have four so let's let's self scorch this is just a learning curve see you'll scorch yourself right you want to play your last card into sigdriffa into holga blackhand into this dude a like that and then into the priestess of freya bow before modern freya and then we'll get this guy I mean, it, you know, ultimately taking nine damage to buff that guy a little bit more is not worthwhile. You're better, obviously, just holding off on the Scorch. But it was kind of fun. Uh, Bloody Baron, basically, if he's not in the top of your deck at the end of the round, you move him to the top. And then whilst he's in your deck, you boost yourself by one whenever an enemy is destroyed. So he gets stronger whenever an enemy is destroyed. Um, that's kind of the gist of him. He gets stronger. So you want to kill enemies. But the thing is, he wasn't really killing enemies. So he really didn't get value out of his Bloody Baron. And it is what it is. Are we done? Do we have one more? I, I have no idea. These have all been so easy. Are we done? I think we might be done. We are done! Look at that! Oh my god, just the... The AI just wanted to have card disadvantage there, and hopefully that kind of showcases for some of you new players who don't really maybe realize how important card disadvantage is, why you can't play four cards to lose, to, to win a round, because the next two rounds I just have four more cards than you, and it's much easier for me. That's kind of what happened there. Um, but that's it for the challenges. We have now unlocked every leader and we've used every faction's beginner deck or my beginner deck basically for every faction to do so. So you can see that the beginner decks are, you know, decent, especially when the AI doesn't know how to play. But if you've liked this video, do hit that thumbs up button, guys. Let me know in the comments, you know, what you thought, which challenge you found the hardest, which, you know, faction you like to play uh, or anything else that you would like to see on the channel. Um, beyond that, have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!